this loco should be made yeah. and ready to run. It's a saddle tank built by Andrew Barclay and it's got six wheels. To work out why I think this would make a good ready to run model, I want to go all the way back to the prototype history. Basically, these were built to be more powerful versions of the 040s with an extra set of wheels, bigger firebox, bigger boiler, even a little bunker. Now, that leaned really well into the ready to run model because we've been proven that 060s sell incredibly well in ready to run. Cursed you at victories by Planet Industrials, Rapido Hunslets, Hornby Packet B2s, even the upcoming KR models, Balathron, or whatever it's called. They're all 060 industrially focused locomotives. And they've all sold incredibly well, apart from the Balathron, which seems to be quite popular in pre-orders. But they've all sold really rather well. Now, I mentioned the Packet B2 because Many believe that that model was produced on the back of the success of the W4, which was the four-wheeled equivalent. Now, I mentioned earlier about how these model, these locomotives were based on the 040s. We've actually already had 040 Andrew Barclays produced in Ready to Run. They were by Hattons, and again, they seem to have sold really rather well. And also, Hattons have proven that they're dedicated to that tooling because they've actually made some changes to one of the cabs and they're producing it again in Ready to Run two, three years later, which is awfully, awfully interesting because it shows they're still interested in producing new models and new variants of their pre-existing models. We're going to keep Hattons up on a shelf because we're going to get them down later because I want to chat about them later. But what would it add in Ready to Run? Well, it's another 060 industrial saddle tank, which I've spoken about how popular they are before. But also it would add another Andrew Barclay in Ready to Run, because at the moment there is two, technically, the 14-inch and the 16-inch cylindered Andrew Barclays produced by Hattons. Now, Judith Edge did build a kit for these, um, but Hattons have proven that they are willing to take on kit manufacturers, as there was kit manufacturers who were producing the four-wheeled equivalent. So I'm going to leave the Judith Edge argument to the side for now. But people seem to like collecting families of locomotives. Um, you know, a lot of people who have bought the 040 W4 packet seem to have bought the B2 060 packets because it's nice to have a pair. And I won't lie, the popularity and how good the W4 was did lead me on to pre-ordering the B2 because I knew it would be a good model. And I think that would work for this model as well because the Hatton and Andrew Barclays are very well regarded models by most people. Could parts be shared then in the same way that the W4 shares some parts with the B2? Could that work for the Andrew Barclays? I think so. In the same way, like I said, that Hornby did it with the packets, the tooling could inform each other in the sense that the general dimensions of the tanks and things are very similar between the 040s and the 060s so a lot of the legwork will have already been done in producing them in CAD it will just be extending them to suit a longer wheelbase now there is a couple of these preserved such as Horden which is was running on the Foxfield Railway for the Notty 100 weekend when I took this film but there's also a couple of others dotted around the country with different detail differences and whatever which would be good to measure up and 3D scan. Now, I'm going to mention Hattons again because I think it would be there who took this model on. They did 3D print, 3D scan rather, and measure up real life locomotives to produce their 040s. So it would work well that we've got prototypes for the 060 ones that they could do the same thing with. Now, what would they run with in model form? Well, children's, open wagons, vans, Genesis, and Hornby coaches as well as BR stock and preservation, would all be correct pro prototypically for this model. And I think the Luke Ball are behind it, if I'm honest, having ridden behind one in a vintage coach. It just gives that proper light railway feel. I think it's sick. Anyway. Could the tooling be adapted in the future? Well, as with a lot of industrial locomotives, there was millions, it seems, of detail differences between locomotives buffers 
cab designs, things like that. Now, Hattons have already proven they're dedicated to producing different detail differences with their four-wheeled variants, and even in the new run, they've put a new cab on one of them, I think. So they've proven they are willing to create de detail differences between the models, which would be popular as well. The amount of people I've seen online who've managed to collect all of the Andrew Barclays and all of the packets and whatever to collect all the different detail differences, such as handrail placements or cabs or back heads or whatever, is mental. And I think that kind of collector side of it has a lot to do with the modeling hobby nowadays. And producing them detail differences would be incredibly popular for those people. And also for industrial models, it means we can spec out which ones we'd actually like. Like the people who owned collieries, ironworks, etc. used to do in the old days. It, there's quite a nice circularity to that. But could the tool be used for anything else in the future? Well, I believe so. Because Andrew Barclay also built side tank variants of their 060 with some sort of details, but the chassis were very, very similar. So, I think if the manufacturer took this on, like I say, probably Hatton, was smart about it, the bodies could be swapped and produced at a later date on the same sort of chassis, which would again cut down development costs and increase the amount of people who'd be interested in buying the model. So there's a lot of chance for production in the future as well. Will it happen? I hope so. And if it does happen, please send me a model because clearly it's me who's given you the idea, whoever produces it. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening to me ramble on for a little bit about what model I think we should have in ready to run. And if you agree with me, let me know in the comment section below. If you disagree with me, let me know if there's any ways I can improve the video. Again, let me know. And I thought as a little special treat, if you made it to the end, I'll show you the locomotive that I think will be next in this series. I know. See you next time.